So you want to solve some elevator problems in your physics class. Well, let's not do it in the classroom. Let's head out to the elevator. Gonna need a helmet. Gotta have some gloves. And the most important thing, got me my trusty scale so I can actually measure the force between my feet and the floor. Ready to go. Elevator problems. They're the same as rocket problems and falling objects with friction problems and helichopper problems. Let's learn physics. Hey, Mark. You know where I'm going? Where are you going? To the elevator to take some video. Oh, <laughs> it's early morning, and you're nurturing your potential, heading past the nurse's office to that elevator. We're going to go up first. There are two accelerations on the way up. One is at the very beginning when you're accelerating upward, and one is at the end when you're accelerating downward, slowing down. Brought the trusty scale, I'm going to drop it under my feet, stand on it, and you're going to watch as you see the very small acceleration indicated on the way up. So here's the acceleration up, see it? Oh, look at that, very slightly larger. Normal force up, larger than weight. Here we go again, still up, reaching the top floor, slowing down, accelerating down. And the normal force is smaller than the weight. Right about now, you're like, whoa, give me some help here. You're pressing that alarm, and you just, you're just thinking there's a fire here, and you shouldn't even be using this elevator. Now, we can, in class, simulate what's happening in the elevator by using one of these things. And if you take this, and you, it's, it's, it's accelerating upward, so it's speeding up on the way up. You get, do you see that at the beginning? Is it? Larger force up than weight to cause the up acceleration. Or as it reaches the top floor, it's moving up, moving up, moving up. Oh, now the up force is smaller than the weight to cause the down acceleration. So we are dealing with an up velocity in both of those cases. And in the first case, while starting up, the velocity is up and the acceleration is up. And the acceleration is the important one. And so the normal force to cause that acceleration is larger than the weight because this is a vector equation. Now the velocity is still up, but that doesn't really matter. The acceleration is what matters. Now reaching the top floor, your acceleration, that's the important one, is going to be down. So the net force that causes it is going to be down. That is a vector equation. The net force causes an acceleration in a particular direction. So you get the net force down, which means that the down force, the weight, which is the same as it was before, is larger than the normal force up. So focus on the direction of acceleration and which force is going to be bigger. Let's solve a problem in the up direction. 90 kilogram man steps aboard an elevator, stands on a scale, presses the button for the top floor, accelerating up. Scale reads 950 newtons, find his acceleration. You want to stop the video and try it? It's probably better for your learning. So here it is again, stop it, try the problem. A good sketch always helps. So there's the guy standing on the scale. Velocity is up and acceleration is up. That's what counts. Acceleration is up, which means that 950 newtons, that's the up force. 900 newtons is the down force. And the net force is 50 newtons. And that's what we're going to put into Newton's second law. 950 newtons minus 900 is 50 newtons. Solve it, you get 0.556 meters per second every second up. Here's another up problem, but in this case we're reaching the top floor, accelerating down. Mass of the girl aboard an elevator who reaches the top floor of the building and accelerates to stop. You want this to be a good learning video? Stop it. Try it. Remember sketch, acceleration direction, free body diagram, second law. Stop it and try it. Now in this case, velocity is up, but the important acceleration is down. That means that you know that the weight is bigger than the normal force, the reading on the scale. On the right, you've shown the free body diagram. You've started Newton's second law, and remember that down is positive because it's accelerating down. So, what's the weight? That's mg. What's g? It's about 10, so weight is 10m, and you can put that into the equation now. So, on the left-hand side of that equation, 10m, which is the weight, minus 600 newtons, is equal to the mass, unknown, times 2 meters per second every second. So, get rid of the units, 
And just take a look at that thing. 10m minus 600 is equal to 2m. Gather the like terms, and there's your answer. Our mass is 75 kilograms. Now we're going to jump aboard the elevator again and take a look at the down direction. Now this is a velocity down direction, but the velocity direction doesn't matter. It's the acceleration direction that helps us out here. Pay attention to acceleration. Heading down initially. Oh, you see it? A little bit less. You're on the top floor. Hit the button for the basement so you're going down. Velocity is down, but more importantly, at the beginning, your acceleration is down. Your job is to find the scale reading, normal force. Again, really want to learn? Stop it and practice. Here's the problem statement again. Sketch first. The acceleration is down. That's the important thing. Then you know that the weight, which is 500 newtons, 50 kilograms is the mass, is larger than the normal force. So you know that that's a fact. Then you apply Newton's second law, net force is mass times acceleration, 500 newtons minus the normal force, which you don't know, is equal to 50 kilograms times the known 3 meters per second every second. Solve that problem, get a normal force of 350 newtons. Smaller than the weight, as expected. And again, you're on your way down, but you're reaching the bottom, and you felt it. As you reach the bottom, the uh, normal force up is greater than the weight down. Look at that. That's as you reach the bottom floor. Acceleration is up, net force is up, normal force is bigger than the weight. Tips and tricks and things to remember. If you're moving up or down at a constant velocity and the acceleration is zero, it's the same as if you were at rest. The normal force and the weight balance. But if you're moving up and slowing down while reaching the top floor, or moving down and speeding up, acceleration is down. Then, the down force is going to be bigger than the up force because the acceleration is down. Always identify the direction of acceleration, not velocity, because the net force and the acceleration are always in the same direction. That'll help you a lot. Here's some tricks to get you quick answers. Remember, if the acceleration is left, the net force causing that also has to be left because Newton's second law is a vector equation. Net force and acceleration always in the same direction. So if you have a 70 kilogram object that's accelerating at 2 meters per second every second down, maybe a rocket, maybe a falling object with friction, maybe a helicopter, maybe an elevator, but it's still acceleration down 2 meters per second every second. The up force is going to be smaller than the weight. And if g is 10 meters per second every second, or 10 newtons per kilogram, and the acceleration is 2 meters per second every second, then you can either add or subtract 10 plus 2 or 10 minus 2 to get 12 or 8 meters per second every second for Newton's second law. In this case, you know it's smaller. Multiply by 8. 70 kilograms times 8 meters per second every second gives you 560 newtons for the answer. Or if acceleration's up, the net force is up, and the up force is bigger than the weight. Quick problem if you want to test yourself. Acceleration is 2g upward. Mass is 300 kilograms. Find the up force. Yeah, stop it. Again, if you want to actually test yourself and make this a good video, didn't stop it, did you? All right, whatever. So 2g is 20 meters per second every second in addition to the regular g. So that's 20 plus 10 gives you 30. 300 kilograms times 30 meters per second every second gives you 9,000 newtons up and 3,000 newtons down with a net force of 6,000 newtons. So what did my scale move? Like five pounds in either direction? So if I weigh 225 and it moves five pounds, that's about 0 0.022 G or 0 0.22 meters per second every second. All right, quick summary tips. We're almost there at the end. So first thing you should do, really pay attention to the direction of acceleration, not velocity. Bigger force has to be in the same direction as the acceleration along with the net force. Use a free body diagram and then apply Newton's second law. And this applies to rockets, it applies to helicopters, it applies to objects falling with friction, it applies to elevators. Now if you're still horribly confused at the end, it's totally fine. I solve problems in multiple ways. So go back in this video and practice, or go elsewhere in practice. But you're gonna have to struggle with it to figure out how to really solve and understand elevator problems. Thanks for watching Learn Physics. And thanks for that thumbs up too. Really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks. Subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday, and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics.
You just learned physics.